My name is Caitlin McMahon and in today's video, I am going to talk to you about compassion and choices. Now, the thing is, is about compassion is when I think of compassion, I immediately think sunshine and light, right? Lots of rays of sunshine. And while compassion seems very nice, it can feel really difficult when maybe you're not, you maybe weren't exposed to this light. You've just been buried with criticism and being called names. You feel insignificant. You have a low self-esteem. It's sometimes really hard for you to even get out of bed in the morning, much less even think of light and compassion. You may be trying to bring joy to others, but then you get pushed down and you're saying you're too nice or you're too much of a pushover. And then you say to yourself, well, I don't understand why I should be nice when they're being so mean to me. I might as well just toughen up and I might as well just be mean too. This is honestly the easiest thing to do. When you're living in darkness and when you're in that cliff of darkness and maybe you've been close to the depth of the steps of death and you feel scared and you feel like you just want to cry and every day is a sad day and you feel like a burden to others and no matter what you do nothing seems to measure up to what your standard is what your family standard is what your friend's standard is. And then we get tired of ourselves and we get to the point where we feel like we need to turn into a chameleon. And we, in order to keep us safe, in order to keep us from not getting hurt, we actually change ourselves. We look at people and we immediately feel like we need to be like them. We immediately feel like, well, this is a successful person, so this is what I have to do. But then we get our hearts broken when we try to pursue happiness in someone else because they couldn't meet our needs. When you live a life of low self-esteem, it doesn't feel good. In fact, one of the easiest things that you can do is stay in bed because you just feel like you're not important. And one of the easiest things to do is cry, but then you're told, stop crying, you're embarrassing me. So then you hold it in. And then before you know it, you don't even realize it, but you're starting to actually carry the anger inside of you. And that anger is turning into unforgiveness. And that anger is starting to change you on a cellular level. To the point now you feel like, yeah, I do need to be a tough ass. And then you do start to push people away. And then before you know it, you're alone. And you're starting, you just feel like you're in this cliff of darkness and you don't know what to do with your life. I've been there. I've been close to the suicide note. I've been very close to just imagining myself of like, you know what? This whole thing of life, I know they say it's bright and you can find life gives you lemons, but I don't like it. That was me 11 years ago. 11 years ago, I personally just felt so insignificant in the world, I was buried in names. 
names that I will not say here on camera, to the point I became everything but not myself, but honestly, I just kind of became nothing. I felt like I was nothing. I felt so, so down. Until one day, I thought low self-esteem was worse, but until one day I actually realized, you know, I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of just finding myself on this bathroom floor, crying my eyes out, looking in the mirror and totally just telling myself that I'm ugly and I am just all the negative words that people have told me. I'm tired of it. But I don't know how. I don't know how to find this light. So I started actually opening the Bible and nothing. And I don't understand this. I threw that around. <laughs> I threw that to the room. I, I threw that across the floor. Couldn't really look on my phone. Couldn't really journal or anything. And because I just I didn't have those privileges at 14. Um, and so at that point, all I knew was I was at my worst and I needed help. So I prayed and God gave me light. There's more to that story. The truth is, is when you're in the presence of God, it's, it can feel a little scary and uncomfortable. But God was able to bring me this light. But here's where the choices come in. Even though it was so easy for me to want to just stay in bed, be sad, take my anger out on others, have, forget, have unforgiveness, constantly care about what other people think, even though it was so easy to do, I knew with my new transition, and I actually found this out later on in life, so I'm telling you guys just gold right now. <laughs> I found within my transition, within my transition, compassion was basically having the ability to be able to have sympathy and concern for someone with misfortune and sufferings. And I remember just when I think back and I reflect, I was like, I didn't have a lot of people who shared compassion with me. I didn't have a lot of mentors in my life to be able to share the bright side. I didn't have a Facebook group or a community social media group to be, I could just be able to vent into. I had myself and of course I ended up moving to God. But then I just remember that very next day, sitting in the library in my high school, actually realizing I need to make a choice. Either A, I continue to be a, you know, keep going down this road of darkness and just being sad all the time and sorry all the time, or I could choose the light and I can choose to actually be more of a compassionate person. And I can choose to become the light in somebody's world. What if I became that compassionate person? So that way when somebody else feels the way I felt 11 years ago, I'm in their corner. I'm there to listen. And I'm there to say, hey, I've been through what you've been through. And I just, I understand how you feel. And I just want to let you know there's light at the end of this tunnel. But making the choice of compassion and actually changing the way I even looked at myself. And actually realizing that I needed to change in order to be a compassionate person. I chose to work toward my highest self. Which means I worked on my talk. I worked on my faith. I worked on the things that I struggled with most was conflict. And actually, remember I told you about being a chameleon? Well, 
I always was under this perception that I needed, everybody needed to like me in order to survive, and that is not the truth. We need to be okay with the fact that people are not going to like what we are doing, and that's okay. God love them. They're just not our people, and that's okay. We need to understand, we need to make it normal that we do not, we do not need to be like everybody else because we have unique gifts and talents and abilities. And I just really truly believe that becoming the compassion created more positive ripple effects in this earth. But being able to even teach people and being able to help the same girl 11 years ago and show her that there's hope and there's faith and you have a story and a puzzle piece on this earth and you are not significant you are not unsignificant you are very much a necessity and asset in this earth god is a plan to be able to just be in the presence to be in front of you right now and to be proud and to just say that i believe in you that just humbles me so much that just humbles me so much. Compassion, compassion, I believe, is just a really great form of God's love. And I just, I love how compassion was able to help shift me. And I'm excited to see how compassion is going to be able to shift others. But what I say about positive ripple effects is it's like ripples. It's going, you know, when you drop a drop in the water and the ripples occur and they get larger and larger and larger, that's exactly what's going to happen. That's exactly what I will be creating is positive ripple effects in this earth by helping stand up, helping show people that they can stand up. So if you are not in my Facebook group, definitely get in there. There is going to be a lot of things happening for sure in there. And I just simply, um, that Facebook group is basically where I teach low self-esteem women and men how to be able to stand up on their own two feet again. How to be able to maybe find confidence in themselves for the first time. So I'm really, really excited. Go ahead and jump in there. It'll just have some questions in there. And then of course, after that, you'll be in and I can fully make sure that I can nurture you and I can make sure that you're well taken care of and heard and I can be able to help you and also learn from you as well because I don't like to say I'm the expert. I'm just a helping hand, helping another brother and sister. All right, I will see you later. Take care, God bless, and I will see you later. All right.